Good morning. This is Keith Oglesby with Christ Episcopal Church. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today we'll continue our experiment with a shorter, more hopefully reflective type of morning prayer, including a reading from uh, the psalm assigned for today, but just a few of the verses from Psalm 102, and then also a portion or the assigned reading from the gospel, which is Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Um, here in the new Formation and Arts Building, uh, the chapel has people doing yard work right outside, so it's not a good place for me uh, to record morning prayer. But let's begin with a moment of silence, and then we'll step through a, a time of reflection on God's word. So we'll begin with a portion of Psalm 102, which is found on page 731 of the Book of Common Prayer, if you have access to one. We'll read verse 1, and then verses 17, 18, 19, and 20. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. The Lord will look with favor on the prayer of the homeless. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord. For the Lord looked down from his holy place on high. From the heavens he beheld the earth that he might hear the groan of the captive and set free those condemned to die. So even just in small part, this psalm points to the emotions that the psalms often capture, that uh, the scripture is not just about a, how to live the, a good life, it's also about when life is hard. And how do we call out to God and call out with the faith that God does hear, that God cares. That was our opening verse, but then these other verses I read that some of the people that we often think of who struggle the most, that God has a special place for them, for those who are homeless, for those who are in prison, even for those condemned to die, that they have a special connection with God and God's heart of compassion, that God calls us as God's people to share that heart of compassion. However we engage in relationship, that's appropriate in ministry, but to have solidarity with those who are often struggling the most. And for us, when we struggle, to know we have a comforter, a God who cares. And as we approach Pentecost this Sunday, that the Holy Spirit is that presence of God among us, between us, that enables us to know God's comfort. And now, let's go to the passage from Luke that is assigned for today. Well known to many of us raised in the church, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, a story about two sisters. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village, for a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. Here ends the lesson. So in just a few verses, that we have so much that we could cover and reflect on. I invite you after this time together to read it again on your own, maybe multiple times, and the practice of what's called Lectio Divina, to see yourself in the story. With whom do you identify? Is it Mary or Martha? Are you just someone standing or sitting nearby seeing that encounter? It seems, we don't know for sure, of course, but it seems this is a family that Jesus knew beyond just this encounter, that he was welcomed into their home. 
It may or may not be the same Mary and Martha that we read about in John's gospel with her brother Lazarus, who was raised from the dead. But in the church's teaching, often Mary and Martha have represented two different ways of being in the church and in the world. One more contemplative, represented by Mary sitting at Jesus' feet, and then one more, the person who does work, represented by Martha and her busyness with getting ready uh, for supper for her guests. And one is not better than the other. As some teach, both are needed in the life and ministry of the church. Uh, I do remember, I've always, in my earlier years at least, thought Mary was the hero of the story and Martha was kind of grouchy. And I remember in a public setting of reading this passage that one woman just said, this story makes me so angry. And it kind of shocked me. But as you can imagine, she identified more with Martha and felt that rebuke or what felt like a rebuke from the Lord. So in our reflection on it, just know that God's love and care uh, is for both Mary and Martha, whatever uh, person we identify with or for some other type, uh, that we are all needed, all of our personalities, our strengths, our weaknesses are all part of Christ's body here on earth. And as best we can, as, as human as we are, try to acknowledge that and make room for each other, appreciate each other. So again, let's take some, moment, uh, some moments just of silence and reflect on our two sisters. Now, uh, I invite us to pray. Again, you can stop the video at this time and, and pray as long as you want, just in this context of psalm and scripture. Uh, but whatever is on your heart, for those close to you, for those who are suffering that you know of, members of the church or members of your neighborhood, to pray for those, whether it's something related to COVID, those who've been sick, those who are recovering, those we've lost, those who care for the people who are sick with COVID, but all other uh, challenges we may face in terms of our health, our work, our way of life. Pray for our country, pray for our healing, uh, healing not just of body, but of our social fabric, that we are better able to love and care for each other, uh, that we learn from the good examples and we repent those parts of our lives where we're not kind, not living as God commands. So again, time for silence. As our Lord taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, the collect we prayed last week, and I'm going to keep praying it as we do this experiment through June, because I think it's an, an important one, and it's um, in our morning prayer. It's a collect found on page 100, and it's a collect for guidance. Collect is just a, another word, and you know, we like to use different words in the Episcopal Church, uh, but of gathering our thoughts, our hearts, and praying usually from a leader praying from the front, but any of us can pray these and we can pray them in unison. So a collect for guidance on page 100. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And again, on this 
Friday before Pentecost, this day, May 21st. I pray the rest of your day is wonderful, that you have a glorious weekend. I think we should have good weather. Gather with people that you love. And if you can, please come to church this Sunday for Pentecost. Wear red or orange or something bright that looks like fire, like the fire of tongues that came on the apostles in, uh, in Mary on Pentecost. Yeah, but we will also have some fun things, some crafts for kids, food trucks that will start late morning, like I think by 10 a.m. or soon thereafter. Uh, and we'll have some Kona ice for the kids for adults too. So please come out for Pentecost if you can, but if you can't, uh, be praying for us and we'll be praying for you. May God bless you.